When the Land Rover Defender TD5 engine was built, the Land Rover engineers developed a powerful engine um, and they mapped the fuel mapping in the ECU towards the power that they wanted to get out of the engine. Now to increase the power of the engine, they needed to have a turbo and they fitted a Garrett 2050 turbo on the car. Now turbos increase the airflow, increase the pressure, and the more airflow you get through an engine, the more power you can generate. And as a rule of thumb, one pound per minute of airflow creates about 10 horsepower at the flywheel. So it is very important that the turbo is working properly and that the turbo is aligned with the ECU fuel mapping together with all the sensors and so on because all those sensors will feed information into the ECU and then the ECU will then calculate based on the fuel map how much fuel it has to inject into the engine. Now, a lot of us are so tempted to upgrade the fuel map of the ECU, modify it so we get more power out of the car. Well, I am not convinced about all of that because what the Land Rover engineers did, they looked for the perfect compromise between drivability, power, environmental aspects, and uh, longevity of the engine. That's what they did. They made a compromise on the fuel map of your TD5. <clears throat> now we can modify the fuel map of the ECU and then you get more or less power depending where you want to place it. But don't think that you will get more power of the engine without changing the turbo because you will have to change the turbo to a more powerful turbo if you're really going to get into serious changing of the fuel map of your ECU. But for the sake of this video, uh, I am not changing my fuel map at all. I'm going to use my standard fuel map in my ECU and I will have my standard TD5 engine with no modifications on it whatsoever. And I will just drive it and see how close my performance of my engine is still aligned with the performance or efficiency of my turbo. And that's important because most of the cars, when they get a bit older, they suffer from power loss, but that's mainly because of the auxiliary devices, like the turbo which is going bad, like the intercooler which is getting clogged up, like the MAF or the MAP sensors that are no longer pro working properly and giving the wrong information to the ECU, and hence the injection of the right amount of fuel is no longer correct. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can measure the alignment of your ECU fuel map together with the performance of your engine and your turbo. And we will be looking for efficiency points on the turbo map. To do that, you will need a very simple device, uh, basically a data logger, and you can use the Nanocom, which I show right here, which is a very cheap device and allows you to capture data live uh, while you're driving. What I have here is the Nanocom diagnostics tool for a Land Rover Defender. The tool comes for different cars, but if you only buy the Land Rover TD5 licenses for this device, then you can actually diagnose and live log all the parameters of your car while you're driving. And that's what we've done during this video. Uh, we hooked up the Nanocom with the blue plug to the front of your ECU, your diagnostics plug, and then the device will power up and it will show you all the parameters of the car. In addition, if you want to do live logging, you take a little memory card, you slide it into the slot and you store the recorded data while you're driving onto the memory card. And it's this memory card that you'd later take to your laptop or your PC or your Mac to read it out because the file on there is a CSV file, so it's a space delimited file, so you can easily import it in Excel and it will give you all the parameters that you need to do a proper analysis. The device itself is low cost, it runs you around 200 to 300 euros depending on the keys and the options you select. And it's really a very important tool if for any do-it-yourself guy, for any Land Rover enthusiast, if you're serious about your Land Rover, then I highly recommend that you buy one of those tools. And this is the kind of thing you will have to do, because you will have to capture the RPMs, the speed, 
the absolute manifold pressure, the intake pressure, and the temperature. These are all parameters we will capture while we are driving, and from that we will be able then to deduce and plot all those operating points on the turbo map for that specific turbo, the Garrett 2050 turbo. And then you'll see that if your points are lining up in the high efficiency zone, then you know that your turbo still works properly, that your MAF and your MAP and all the other sensors are still working properly, and that your ECU is steering the car to the proper area for fuel injection. Now, in general, uh, the fuel uh, air ratio is about 28 parts of air and one part of fuel. That is what is considered the most efficient and optimum fuel mix. Now, you can change all this and you can make your car far more performant by changing the fuel map, but if you change the fuel map in your ECU, be aware that you will have to give in on one of those aspects like drivability, um, longevity of the engine, or whatever. And be v So, it is always a compromise. So, be very careful once you start tuning the ECU, the fuel maps, and you have to know exactly what you're doing. But nevertheless, that's not the topic in this video. Let's get on now uh, with how we're going to do this. So as I said, you will need a data logger to log the data. The data logger will be activated while you're driving, connected to your ECU, to your diagnostics plug, and then it will record all the details, all the parameters onto a, um, a stick or a USB stick or whatever, or a little memory card, it doesn't really matter, but it will record it. And then afterwards, we'll take out that file, we plug it into an Excel spreadsheet, and then we do our calculations, and then we'll map it to the um, profile of a, a turbo, the Garrett uh, 2050 turbo, which, and that's the, what we call the profile, that's what we call the um, efficiency uh, chart of the turbo, and we'll plot our points and we'll see uh, if we are still within specs, and if we are not, then we know something is wrong, and then we can have a look later on what could go wrong. Now, the way to test this is very simple. You plug in your diagnostics tester on the car, and then we take the car up to a highway uh, where you can actually accelerate, and what I found out is the best way to do is get the car in the fifth gear, drive around 60 clicks an hour, start your login, and ramp up speed up to about 100 clicks an hour as fast as you can. And while you're doing that, you should log all the parameters that the car is generating. So now let's have a look uh, how the result looks like. And now we what I show here is the efficiency chart of the turbo, which is fitted on a TD5. And as you can see on the map, we have an area right here, which we call the surge area and it's everything behind the left of this line. And that's the area where you don't want to have uh, any uh, activity in when you start plotting the points of your car, because it means basically that the pressure is building up uh, on, the, on the intake manifold, but then again, the engine isn't taking any air. And then as a consequence, your turbo will have a lot of wear and tear. So that is not a good point to be in. On the other side of the graph, uh, you'll see the blue line, and the blue line is actually the choke point, uh, where the turbo is no longer to provide you with sufficient airflow, uh, basically meaning that the turbo is too small uh, for your engine. The yellow part is where you want to be with all your measurements, uh, which we'll do in a few minutes. That's where the efficiency of the turbo is at its best. Now, there are two axes on this. There's the pressure ratio, and there is the corrected airflow in pounds per minute. The pressure ratio is nothing more than the absolute air pressure, which is measured at the intake of the turbo, or also called the atmospheric uh, air pressure, and the output of the turbo. And that gives you basically a relationship between the uh, in put pressure and the output pressure and we'll measure this uh, with the following calculation. Uh, we'll record the map values, uh, which is the manifold absolute pressure and the atmospheric pressure. Now, if you don't have a sensor or reading for this one, then you can use the one uh, for your location, geographical location. So if you're near, nearby the coast, then that's about one bar. 
The corrected airflow, which is on the bottom, is measured in pounds per minute. For the corrected airflow, we'll use the MAF, your mass airflow uh, measured value, uh, which is part of a sensor fitted on your intake of the turbo. Um, and it measures the flow of air through the engine. You may have to convert it uh, from grams per hour to pounds per minute, but these are all very easy calculations we can do in the spreadsheet. So what we expect to see uh, once we start plotting our data onto this graph is that our turbo, our car should be working along this area here. And if it does not, then we have a bit of a problem. Right now we loaded the CSV file into the um, Excel spreadsheet and as you can see it's coming from the Nanocom, the TD5 engine and it's my input file. Uh, I have a column with my RPM. As you can see we've got a column with the speed so I was accelerating from 68 kilometers per hour in fifth gear all the way up to 102 uh, clicks per hour and then we measured the airflow uh, which is the input from the MAF in grams per hour then we had the atmospheric pressure which was the um, in my location where that is you see it dropping a little bit but that's because the engine was sucking a lot of air into it we have the map pressure which we measured and then we'll calculate the ratio as explained before which is the relationship between the atmospheric pressure and the actual map pressure and then finally uh, we calculated the airflow which is actually the uh, airflow right here but it's converted now to pounds per minute uh, from the grams per hour and on the left I have a graph which on the vertical um, axis you have the uh, ratio and on the bottom uh, we have the actual airflow and then you'll see and then I have the little triangle here which is your actual measured value so if I'm looking at the first one right here we are having 1.28 which is this one and then we have 5.37 which is about over here so that's the first sample then we have the second sample third the fourth and we can actually walk it through and that's what we'll do now so uh, I'll let it flow and then we plot that on top of the actual um, performance map of the turbo and we should be sitting in the right locations. We're stepping through the individual samples and as you can see it's just moving along. You notice the turbo doesn't get much higher than two uh, kilograms that's because the wastegate will open up at that rate so this is how you can measure and compare your performance uh, figures with a turbo chart that you can find on the internet matched to your turbo this specific car uh, did very well and although it has 200,000 kilometers it still fits well within the efficiency curve of the turbo meaning that all the sensors and the engine and the ECU all doing well and are still within tolerance.